create a new project, pick a BlackBerry widget project. We've added a, a, a new set of start pages into all of our tools to get you connected to all the different resources uh, that are popular or common that you may want to get to. So access and, and links to our APIs, links into our forums and, and blog articles and those sorts of things to really get you up and going uh, quickly with the tool. For BlackBerry Widget, the heart of it is the configuration file. So here we're specifying all of our information, such as uh, you know, our, our author names, our company names. Uh, we're also able to add our different origins that we want to allow access to, uh, as well as what transports we maybe want to communicate across, uh, icon images that we want for the app, so various different things inside that configuration file. From there, it's, it's, it gets right into web development. Create your, your HTML screens however you want, your JavaScript uh, that's gonna provide your logic behind that. Visual Studio's got a, a nice little what you see is what you get editor for HTML, but there's all sorts of different web tools uh, out there that, that uh, may be your favorite tool. Uh, early on at the developer conference, we showed some demonstrations of some integration prototyping that we did into Dreamweaver uh, as well for being able to build BlackBerry widgets. Uh, so we'll, we'll have more details on that uh, as, it, as it evolves. But for here, we're, we're seeing that we're, we're able to uh, go ahead and do something very quick and simple that accesses the good old BlackBerry personal information number on the device and, and using our, our APIs to be able to do that. So a quick little alert box, being able to get our blackberry.identity.pin uh, for our, our namespace. We, we basically kept building on the same object structure that started back a while back with our, our BlackBerry dots for uh, being able to access GPS on, on earlier devices and kept building on top of that library. So another thing to mention here is that this is only available inside of a BlackBerry widget. Inside of the normal browser, these APIs are not available. So the fact that we package it and wrap it in one of these installable containers it gives us that security to be able to, uh, to allow that, because the last thing I want to do is browse somebody's web page and have them snag my contact list. Uh, so we, we want to make sure that it's in a, in a secure environment that's a targeted application. So here we've, we've added that identity and we're able to add the, uh, the actual feature ID to it's our declaration or import that we're going to be using that API. Uh, and we're able to, to go ahead and, and run and, and uh, see this on the actual simulator itself. So it gives you a, a kind of a, a quick idea of what you're able to do uh, launching up the simulator. And we'll be able to click on that button and, and see the, uh, the pin number that comes up there. So for any of the different APIs, you'll be going back into this, this area to be able to uh, set them up and configure them uh, in here. So with this version of the, of the tool in here, we'll be able to click on, on the, uh, the, uh, the button, and we'll see our, our pin that, that, that comes up. Uh, the, the existing beta version of the tooling that we've, we've got out there doesn't have the debugging for widget support in it yet. It's got debugging for web content. Uh, it will be coming very, very shortly to be able to have that in there. The other thing uh, that's a new feature in, in the latest version actually will hot swap into a, a, a already running simulator so you don't have to close down the simulator and bring the simulator back up again between builds. So the next different uh, item that we'll, we'll go on here is we'll add a little bit more functionality to show uh, a little bit more integration. So being able to create a contact uh, and, and being able to uh, save that down in. So some uh, pre-created JavaScript here where we actually create a new instance of the contact, fill in its information, save that information down, and then it's actually going to use our invoke API where you're actually able to call any of our, our other applications on the device. Some of our native applications have a, a specific API that you can integrate with them where you can pass data back and forth as well. So in this case, we're actually going to create a contact and now after we save that contact, uh, we'll, we'll pass that over into our contact edit screen. So you can leverage the built-in screens that are on the device for common, uh, common different pieces of information or access that contact list to do searches, to be able to manipulate it for whatever your application needs to do in there. So the next step of, of being able to make this uh, all happen is go ahead and do some more declarations for the different APIs that we're, we're going to use. So on our uh, forums, or uh, sorry, on our uh, beta area, you can get to a link to all the different APIs that are provided out of the box. Uh, the latest beta 3 just went out, which actually has uh, a new focus-based navigation mode for any trackball or trackpad device. Uh, you'll notice that any of those different devices, you get the pointer going around on the web page. If you come to our session at 6 o'clock, you'll, uh, you'll see the, um, the latest revision of, of the Beta 3 that allows you to do that all focus-based. So you can actually tell the difference between uh, a web page and a Java application. I have a demo here if anyone wants to see it after as well. 
So here it's actually created the contact, and when we click on the button to, to create it and view it, it's popped it up into the actual contact screen. So we see here now it's actually in that screen. We hit back, and it's using the usual uh, transition effects that were uh, set by the theme that uh, Eric had showed us uh, in, in the session before, and being able to, to theme uh, the different transitions between the different applications. So we'll do, uh, I think there's one more uh, step in here for the demonstration to, to show some of the different things that, uh, that we're able to do. Um, and, and one of the things that we've been asked a lot by people that do web development is why can't I integrate with that menu? I want to put menu items on that menu, that's where my user is going. So one of the things inside of your BlackBerry widget is the entire Chrome of the browser is gone. It's not around there, you've got the rendering pane, so you have full control of what your UI is going to look like. And with that, full control of what that menu is going to look like. So in the case here, we're able to add a menu item onto the actual screen. Uh, so whatever you want to put on that menu is your separators, order it however you like. It's your full development environment. It's not the browser running. We're just using it for rendering the UI. So here we've got our, our actual um, uh, screen that's, that's popped up with our, our menus. Uh, and we want to declare the different APIs that we're, we're using in there so that we're able to see that stuff. The next step is, is uh, saving and, and running it on the simulator. We'll, we'll get to see what the, the menus uh, look like in, in that uh, environment. I think uh, one of the things that we're, we're doing in here as well is, is showing you we, we have some home screen integration as well. So if you've got new data that's pushed down and you want to update what that icon looks like on, on the home screen, you're able to dynamically change that home screen text and, and that home screen icon, uh, just like any of our native APIs in, in the other applications. So here we've got our, our trusty application again. Uh, if we, uh, I think we, if we bring up our menu, we'll see our change home screen uh, menu item there. But first thing, we'll pop out and see what our, our actual icon looks like first so we can actually see it change. So it's just the default uh, icon and, and text on there. So if we want to change the home screen, I think uh, this item's going to go through and, and, and actually change the text. But it is our app running again there. So if we change our, our home screen and we pop back out, we'll be able to see the, uh, the changes that we're back in. So we change it to the good old food. Uh, so you've got you've got the ability, that's how you're able to do things like overlays for icons, for new notifications, um, and, and all of those, those different aspects. So we talked a little bit about being